Ready? Hi, and welcome to the September 16th, uh, 2014 edition of BBA Live. We've got four great panelists I'm really excited to uh, have on with us today. So without further ado, let's get into it. We've got Dave Martinez, Dr. Chupacabra. He's here in Northern Virginia with us, and he's now a mainstay. We've got James Knott, uh, Columbus, Ohio. You all know him as the originator of the show. We're happy to have him here, and I can't wait to put him on the spot. Jonathan McBride of Crafty Beer Reviews from Cleveland, Ohio. And Ryan Rashan of various beer uh, projects in San Diego, who just got off of work and came right onto the computer. So let's go right to James. James, welcome back to the show. Uh, tell everyone what you've been doing since you hung up your EBA cleats, and uh, then tell us how this beer tastes. Hey, Richard. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the invite. It's been a lot of fun even just getting ready for the show tonight, talking to you guys about beer. Uh, I am still blogging, except now instead of blogging about beer, I've been blogging about mountain biking. And the great thing about blogging about mountain biking is that after you ride for two hours, you have really earned an Imperial Stout or an Imperial IPA. So you can afford those extra calories. Um, but when it comes to today's beer, uh, this is a pretty delicious beer. When I first smelled it, what immediately jumped out is kind of that yeasty flavor, but not kind of in a sour way, but more in a like a saison or something. Kind of had like a light but effervescent mouthfeel. And I would guess it was somewhere between 4.5 and 5.5 ABV. But, that, you know, that's just me uh, me speaking. It's pretty tasty, though. I, I'm kind of curious to see what the others think about, like, the actual flavors they're getting and that sort of thing. Richard? All right. Well, thanks for the, uh, the lead-up. We're going to go to Dave Martinez. Dave, why don't you briefly just, you know, introduce yourself. And then um, I thought James did a good job of describing the mouthfeel. So why don't you tell us about the aroma and some more about the taste. Okay, sounds good. So hi, guys. Uh, you probably know me as uh, David Martinez, Dr. Chupacabras on the show. Um, and I've uh, been doing it ever since we moved over to Northern Virginia. So thank you, Richard, for having me. Um, and as far as the uh, uh, smell itself, I mean, it's uh, just like uh, James, you know, said. It's it's this is like a saison, like a from house ale, and I I smell it. it to me, it smells like hay, and I get a slight hint of peach in it, and you can definitely tell there's some kind of maybe wild yeast in there, and it just it just reminds me a little bit of, let's say, if I was walking around on a farm and just kind of taking the air in. If, there's no, you know, animal dung around. Um, as far as the taste itself, I mean, it, it's uh, you get that sweetness um, that you would expect from a saison that um, you know might have some, uh, um, uh, excuse me, some uh, uh, wild yeast qualities in there. Um, mouthfeel itself, um, it's uh, the bubbly, the bubbliness of it. It's, it's. I, I'm drinking it, and it's, it's very pleasant. Uh, you feel the effervescence in your mouth, and it just, it just dissipates afterwards. So I can just keep drinking this over and over again, and it's, it's a great beer, really. So um, thank you for whatever you sent us, and I, I can't wait till I unwrap this bottle. Dave, why don't you give us a rating on the BBA scale, real quick? I'm gonna give this an eight, and uh, let me explain that rating. Uh, I've talked a few times before that I really enjoy saisons, but it's it's hard to get a saison that is doesn't feel like it's it's either too strong of a taste or it's too effervescent or it's too high in alcohol and I'm just trying to have something that I can say hey this is a good beer that I can drink over and over again and I felt that I had something like that when I had a uh, Goose Island's Matilda because I enjoyed that I love drinking it but I think it was a little bit tad too high on the alcohol content, and you can taste it in the in, in the actual beer itself. And I felt mm, I don't know if I call this a, a saison that I would keep enjoying over and over, but this I'm enjoying. I'm getting the qualities that I expect from a saison, and I can just keep drinking this over and over again. So that's a eight for me in the BBA scale. All right, thanks, Dave. Um, Ryan, let, let's go to you. Um, I. 
you know, briefly tell us the things you're doing at San Diego and the craft beer world. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Ryan's a pretty accomplished home brewer. He was part of the collaboration with Stone last year for the Arner Coconut uh, IPA, which I thought was fantastic. Uh, so, Ryan, welcome to the show. And also, uh, let's get into the nuances of this beer. Uh, what really sticks out to you in this beer? And if there's something you don't like in this beer, tell us. Okay, thanks for having me, Richard. Uh, it's been a lot of home brewing for me lately, and I write a monthly homebrew column called the Carboy Chronicles for West Coaster, which is a local publication here in San Diego, and now it's expanding up to Southern California with West Coaster SoCal. So I'm doing the monthly homebrew column with them, and it's been fun. It's been a great ride to see. I've, I've approached the guys that started that publication from the beginning. I was surprised to see there was no other publication covering San Diego beer, which has grown from, I think, when that publication started to maybe just under 30 breweries to now 90-plus breweries here in, in the entire county. So it's been a fun uh, just being in San Diego and seeing the beer scene just evolve and grow and expand. It's been a lot of fun. So as far as the beer we're drinking right now, uh, overall, I think a lot of us agree, it's it's pretty fruity beer overall. It's got a lot of different fruit characteristics. I'm getting a lot of stone fruit type of character. You're getting some nice little tropical elements, like a little bit of like a mango pineapple um, you get like the apricot kind of peachy notes. Um, there's that overall, uh, along with a little bit of a spiciness in there, that leads me to believe this is a mixed fermentation beer. And uh, it's nice and dry, uh, easy drinking stuff. It's been a really, really hot day. It's really refreshing. But yeah, a, a, a nice fruitier take on the style. It doesn't have that typical heavy spiciness. It's not overly phenolic in its character, so I'm really enjoying it. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Jonathan, let's finish the first round with you. Um, so, do you think there's any additional fruit or adjuncts or spices in this beer, or do you think it's just with the yeast, malts, and hops that are used in it? And um, give us your rating on your own crafty beer. Um, how you would rate it on your review site. Uh, and tell us, everyone, what you do. All right, well, thank you again, Richard, for having me on. Again, this is always a lot of fun, and also thank you for sending out the beer to us. So if you guys don't know me, uh, my name is Johnny. I have my own craft beer review channel on YouTube under Crafty Beer Reviews. So I do a lot of just plain old reviews. I do a little bit of everything, though, you know, how-to videos on location stuff. As far as the beer goes, I don't think they're using any kind of adjuncts in here. I really think that, in particular, a lot of the character that's coming from this beer is really out of the yeast. Um, you know, it's got a lot of yeast character. There's definitely a lot of nuances, a lot of layers to this, too. You know, like Ryan was saying, I get a lot of fruitiness. I do get a little bit of a, a subtle spiciness. It's there, but it's not really over the top like it can be. You know, I think this is a Saison. I'm sure a lot of us obviously think that as well. You know, it's got, a, for me at least, it's got like a little bit of a subtle tartness. Not a ton, but just a subtle bit. I don't know if they're maybe using a wild yeast strain or something like that. I also get a little bit of a vineous kind of grape quality. It's really, really easy to drink. I mean, you know, super crisp, refreshing, nice and dry, just like Ryan said. It's also got great effervescence like David and, you know, James had noted as well. This is a great beer. In terms of a rating on my particular scale, I'd go with an 8.9 out of 10. I'd definitely drink it again, and, you know, if we had warmer weather in Ohio, I'd probably have a few of these in a row, depending on the ABV anyways. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, Ryan, can you briefly give us uh, a rating on your scale? I think on your Stumpy Joe Jr. site, you do the, do you do the Beer Geek Nation rating also? Yeah, so I usually do the letter grading on it. Um, I think this is really nice. Uh, I'm going to do like a hybrid like A, A minus type of rating. I think it's somewhere right around that uh, scale for me. Um, I love mixed fermentation beers. And I'm pretty sure that this is one of them, what I would call like a funky kind of farmhouse ale. Uh, this doesn't go overly funky, but um, you can tell they're, they're not just using a Saccharomyces traditional brewer strain just for the beer based on what I'm tasting. Thanks, Ryan. 
Uh, James, give us your rating real quick. I mean, you did design the Better Beer Authority rating scale, so. <laughs> right. So the Better Beer Authority rating scale is more based on just your own preference for the beer. And I'm probably going to give it, oh, man, a 7 on the scale. Maybe an 8. 7. I'll go a 7. Because it is a really good beer. I can't take anything away from it. But it also doesn't, like, jump out at me where I go out of my way for it. What I do like about it, though, is right now it's kind of the beginning of fall in Ohio in football season, and this is like kind of the, like the light, refreshing beer where you know you're not going to get yourself in trouble, but you can have a couple of them while you watch the game, and it's got more flavor than like your local adjunct lager, but you can you know you can just kind of sit back, relax, and have some fun with it. So. I like that. And for me personally, the reason why it's probably not higher than a 7 is because I don't kind of go for the yeasty beers. What I like about it is it kind of has those sort of yeasty, saison, farmhouse type of uh, flavors, but it's not really in your face about it. So, Because for me, a lot of times when it gets really heavy, it kind of gets fatiguing. And I don't find this beer to be fatiguing. Awesome. All right. Well, let's do the reveal. If you guys want to open up your uh, packaging, I'll show you guys on camera what the beer is. James, if you can mute your thing real quick. Yes, so here we are. Um, here's Apex Predator. It's, uh, it's a, a farmhouse ale from Off Centered Ales um, or Off Centered Brewing in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, it's got a really cool uh, label on it, which we'll get into in a little while. So it is a farmhouse ale, which I guess people say is a saison. Or, um, so you guys are right. Jonathan, you are absolutely right that as far as the description goes, there is no adjunct onto the, uh, in this aside from the, you know, the water, yeast, small tops, all that stuff. Um, Confusing because on the website it says it's 35 odd views. On the label it says 25. It's got crystal and sterling hops. Um, and the malts are pills and flaked wheat. So let's get back to some questioning. Jonathan, we're going to. Oh, Richard, you need to be unmuted. Are we still on, gentlemen? Yeah, Richard's still muted. Unmute Richard, yourself, you're Richard. Still muted. How about now? Is that, I can is that hear working? You. I can hear you. Yeah. All right. I don't know what's up with this muting thing. Jonathan, is this a beer you could get in um, in Ohio? And if not, is there anything similar? This is not something I can get in Ohio, to my knowledge. I've never heard of this brewing company before, so despite them being in Chicago, unfortunately, I do not think I can get this without trading anyways. Something similar in Ohio? Hmm. There's nothing that I can think of off the top of my head. It actually reminds me a little bit of a less funky Crooked Stave, though, in terms of something similar. I was lucky enough to have a few Crooked Stave beers this year, and they're definitely a little bit funkier, more tart, you know, more kind of uh, barnyard funkiness. But this one sort of reminds me of it. It almost reminds me of, like, a cross between Crooked Stave and then the Tank 7 from Boulevard with that tropical fruitiness as well. All right, thanks, Jonathan. Um, let's see, Ryan. From the website, it says it has free rise fermentation. Does that mean anything uh, in the brewing well, world? Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of times with a saison, you're going to want to start it at a lower temperature and just let it the yeast naturally raise the temperature of the beer, and uh, that'll get the yeast more active. It'll produce a lot more yeast character and uh, uh, that is a sign to me that they are using some Saison yeast in the beer. Saison yeast is known to stall if you don't get it to higher temperatures and not properly ferment out. This beer is very dry on the finish, uh, and that leads me to believe they let it go to very high temperatures to let that yeast really dry out the beer, 
finish at a really low gravity. And then I'm, I'm definitely, uh, they say something on the label, it says third tropic level farmhouse ale. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I, I'm tasting a, uh, a certain strain of Britannomyces called uh, Bretois, and that produces kind of like a very sort of like tropical fruity um, kind of mango pineapple character, and I'm kind of getting into that with like a slight bit of funkiness. And as Jonathan mentioned, you get just an ever so slight hint of tartness on there too, which means they probably got the pH level down a, a good amount too with the beer. Great, yeah. Something interesting about this beer is coming out of Chicago. When I think Chicago, I think Three Floyds, 40 miles south, or Half Acre and uh, Revolution, who they do a lot of hoppy beers. So I think it's a really interesting style of beer, especially coming out of that part of the, the country. Uh, let's go to... Um, Whose turn is it? Let's go to Dave. It's a pretty unique label on here. You know, it's got a lion pretty much rolling up his fur, showing his insides. Uh, it's just a black and white with some silver hues. What do you think of the label, and would this attract you to buy um, this beer? Funny thing, I was hoping they would actually ask me about the label. Um, <laughs> it's a, uh, if you know, if anybody watching at home looks at it, actually, it's a really cool label. It's really unique because it's very minimalistic. Um, you know, you're. I'm so used to seeing all these labels with like pretty pictures in them, and this is just like somebody, um, somebody that actually knows how to draw pretty well too. I ended up drawing a lion with uh, an X-ray window looking into his stomach where a mouse is and it's very unique it's it's um appealing in in a weird sense and uh, quite you know quite frankly if i was seeing this you know yeah I, I would be like oh what is this you know let me go ahead and pick this up and and see what's up um and of course you know the fact that it is, it is a farmhouse sale um it's it's an appealing label it's really it's cute ish i guess if you want to say and i don't know i it, it draws me it, it's cool. It's a cool label. Look at that. I know lighting kind of sucks in here, but <laughs> it's like that's a pretty cool label. Awesome. All right, thanks, Dave. Uh, James, we're gonna finish with you. Uh, what are your final thoughts on being back? You know, for one night, anyways, on the Better Beer Authority, and then extending an invitation that any time you're in the DC area, you can come on set and show your goods. Uh, you know, your your wear. So. <laughs> you don't want me to show my goods, Richard. I might get sent to jail. Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, no, it's it's been fun to be back, and you know, it's definitely it was definitely a part of my life that I was really proud of, and that I had a lot of fun doing. And in fact, I think the better new Better Beer Authority should come to Columbus, Ohio. And we should shoot on the original Better Beer Authority set. I'll even clear out all of my in-laws' stuff that's cluttered the set since it's uh, in the last 12 months. But, no, I, this, this is a good beer. I think I was going to, I was actually, when uh, David said he wanted to talk about the label, I was thinking the same thing, like, yeah, I want to talk about the label. Because this is like a label, like, if I saw this, I would be more likely to buy this beer and trick myself into thinking I'm enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it would bias me towards liking the beer even more. Um, but, yeah. Richard, I don't know. Did I answer all your questions? <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Well, that does it. Um, a rough estimate of the various grading scales between Brian, Jonathan, and the Better Beer Authority. I would say this beer is somewhere around yeah. eight. An eight to an eight point three. Um, so Apex Predator from uh, Off Color Brewing in Chicago, Illinois, gets an eight point something uh, on the BBA slash Beer Geek Nation slash Crafty Beer Review slash Quick Dirt uh, rating scale. Uh, let us know in the comment section if you've had this beer or what other types of farmhouse ales you like. Uh, for everyone here, thank you, Ryan, Jonathan, James, and Dave. This has been the Better Beer Authority Live.